Alrighty, good evening and welcome everybody. Diabetes the second here with some Dragon Warrior randomizer. We've got a community race, perhaps a return to the weekly Sunday race. squared away here. Waiting for one more person to ready up once they do, we'll be underway. Hopefully everybody is enjoying their Sunday. Beautiful day in my neck of the woods. A lot of outside time, got to enjoy it. Very nice. One of the best times of year. Colors changing. Nice cool weather. Good stuff. Still waiting for one person to ready up. Again, once they do, we'll be good to go here. If you want to follow along with the race, just head over to racetime.gg. Take a look for the active Dragon Warrior randomized race. You'll be able to get links to everybody's streams there. Of course, no sharing of information among the streams, but you're more than welcome to take a look and follow progress along if you choose. Performance now. We've had a couple of tough ones lately. Lots of armor and Sherlock. It's only about a. I forget, we calculated it out once. Only about a 15 or so percent chance, but I feel like it's been like four out of our last six or seven races. It's definitely a challenge, adds a lot to the end game calculation and strategery. We'll see what we get in this one. Down is on. Good luck and have fun. Three, two, one, go. Oh, AG, welcome in. Thanks for the good luck. I do appreciate it. Starting with Fairy Water. Extra key, nice. Radiant. 6, 12, 23, and 8. Sunday. Perhaps getting ready to stream again tonight should be fun. Not sure how far along you are in your playthrough of 
something. Morgana. Fairy water. Torch. Whoops. We do have a gold grind. And wings. House in Fate of Morgana. Okay. I was like, castle... something... Yeah, <laughs> couldn't remember exactly. Yeah, I've been kind of following along passively in the background, which you've probably noticed. Seems like it's been a good playthrough. I just I had haven't been able to follow as, along as closely with the story. Oh, we have radiance. Just use it. This tablet cave, one free chest down here. If it's gold, we'll buy keys. If it's a key, we'll get gold to buy keys. If it's pretty much anything else, we'll just reset out. Gold, so we can buy more keys. And this does take time to, to do. I haven't really decided if it's the best option or not. It seems to be about a coin flip in the community right now as to whether or not you even bother checking the treasury and the back at all, or if you check the treasury, do you check the back? To me, in this circumstance, like, this is a huge advantage. Of course, well, there could be one step outside like it was in our practice last night, but... Surprisingly interesting. Well, that's good to hear. It seems like... I mean, it's a visual novel. If the story doesn't carry it, nothing's gonna... It can have the nicest art style that you want, but if the story isn't interesting, then who cares about looking at still images? But yeah, very true. And I, I really haven't gotten a chance to really follow along too closely. Alright, three and a half minutes, we finally walk outside. Into the swamp. Oh boy. That's a interesting place to have a castle. Might be the southwest corner of the map as well. That's probably going to funnel a lot of people into the basement. So perhaps not really an advantage that we checked it early. So we got a level 2. 14 power is going to help out a lot. Zero, 010. Zero. Empty level otherwise, but big power is going to be very nice. Yeah, it's a bit of a strange one. Very unbalanced. But, I mean, we needed strength more than we needed anything else. Some HP would be nice, so that we're not, you know, dead by the time we walk out of the swamp. Might be worthwhile to see if there's a town immediately nearby. Just because we have gold available, and theoretically a gold grind if I reset. fairy waters as well. I just didn't want to use them when I was clearly one hit from death. Hey, Steel Golem, welcome in. Yep. Pretty much describes the early game. Anytime you start with the swamp start and HP in the 20s, that's uh, it's gonna happen. Hopefully you're having a good Sunday as well. Pretty much described the DWR experience. Not bad. 
Yeah, I was a bit excited. Oh, really? The Dodge? I was happy that we got a race together tonight. It's a good group of people, too. Hopefully now that the tournament has wrapped itself up, we'll get some more casual races going on in the evenings. Probably gonna die if we head north just because of the swamp, but at least we'll get a chance to see what, if anything, is up here. Well, it would have had to have been done by now anyway. Not really spoilers if the last race had to be by Sunday. Unless it's going on during this race. Or I'm secretly in the finals and nobody knew. Late substitution. Well. Nothing really to the north either. At least that we saw. There might have been a few tiles over near the water that we didn't see. Skeleton's effort more. Great. Hmm. Zone Zero's pretty weak. Zone One's got at least one bad enemy in it. Wolves will be pretty hard since we only have one fairy water left. We could grind more out of the treasury. Try to get one more hit in, then throw the fairy water. Didn't quite get there. Yeah, resource management seems to be at least some of the early game here. I mean, perhaps it's better to sit here and hack down ghosts and slimes all the way up to 82 XP. was not enough. Well, it seems like it's going to be a slow, boring start to this one, although I don't really see much option at this point. We do have a gold gold start, gold grind available. But so far we've seen no towns nearby and not much luck getting exploration going either.
and a golem in the exact same spot so we can't see what is to the northwest again. Yeah, I mean, they're the consistent way forward. It just seems like there would almost have to be something better, but it just doesn't seem like there is. Doesn't help that we're taking like 14 damage out of the castle before we even do anything. I am looking forward to the counters in the next iteration of the randomizer. That should be fun. It'll be really interesting, too, because there could be a lot of... Uh, not really a lot, but some degree of data acquisition as well in terms of kind of comparing a lot of things. Yeah, the new iteration of the randomizer 3.0, it's an alpha right now. This isn't being raced on that has lots of uh, data pulls at the end. It'll show you how many times you basically fought, or like hit attack, or run, or died, or whatever. Also tells you how many times you encountered every enemy, whether you beat them, died to them, or ran from them. It'll be interesting to be sure. How many times you cast each spell. Definitely could be interesting for comparison's sake as we go forward. Like, oh, so so and so killed so many whatevers. That was an inferior or superior grind or something. Five, two, 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 and heal more. A little helpful, kind of. Might let us attack some of the stuff here in zone one. Problem is, hurt more is not very good. It'll help us with the Warlocks, for sure, unless they have a healing ability that we haven't seen yet. It's like a heal potion. It's a bit inefficient, since we only have 43 HP. Exact lethal. Seems prudent to try to pick up the level before doing anything else. Well, it helps with the 
hurt more on skeletons. Will also help with heal more on drolls, apparently. It will not, however, help with the Dragonlord breath. Warlocks is the best thing to fight here, although wolves another option as long as they don't punch us too hard. Oh gosh, a chaos seed? Yeah, chaos will mess you up pretty pretty bad compared to standard flags. Totally changes your expectations. Stuff to the northwest that we tried multiple times to get here and we couldn't. Oh boy, how far behind are we? Magic armor, silver shield, okay. So far. fairness, if I had stayed a little bit further to the west in the Plains Tiles, I should still have been in Zone 2 and wouldn't have encountered anything that big. So that part is on me for sure. It also seems we're not in the southwest corner, per se. As we find Breck. Broadsword, so. Ah, oh, jeez. This is tough. I mean, I could legitimately reset here 19 minutes in. Six north, forty-five west. Uh, this is all right. Nonsense. Play the day. Give the field twenty-minute head start. Then play the game. See how good we do. strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it works out for him. We didn't see a flame sword. God, this is like, this is the worst.
Yep, you can have spells at level 1. The only caveat with the spells is you're guaranteed to learn all of them by level 16 in Randomizer. You can start with as many as you want, you can learn them at any time. And you can learn multiple spells at the same time. We've had a couple level 1 hurt mores. Definitely makes the early game a little bit interesting. had seen a cave immediately nearby, then I would have just done a gold grind that way. But without the obvious means to do it, this is the fastest way, so it does sacrifice 200 or so XP that we had already accrued, but I mean, with a broadsword and full defensive equipment, hopefully... That'll make up for it very quickly. Hey, Dr. Ola, welcome in. Uh... We just restart. We restarted. So it was a pretty rough start to the seed. Swamp start, not a lot of HP, not a lot of attack power, enemies kind of on the trolley side. And it turned out, despite us going to the north twice, we didn't see the two towns that are there. And we did have the opportunity to do an opening gold grind, found no other towns or anything to do any additional gold grinds out of a mountain cave or grave or something. So we decided to reset, even after 20 minutes. It's a pretty definitive sign, I would say. We still have to make the walk, so... Don't think there was any swamp on the way up here. Once we got through that initial swamp, we're okay. Otherwise, I've made a grave miscalculation. basically do the same thing with start just without the gold grind aspect, so, you know, we had fairy water to start, and extra keys, oops, windows is not the button I wanted to hit. Trying to hit the function key. Definitely doable. I think one thing I could have done, even absent the gold grind aspect of it, is I could have reset entirely and done a grind on fairy waters. And then been able to accrue XP a bit faster. So that's definitely one, uh, one strat that I could have done. And probably should have done, given the enemy set nearby. And just the fact that we had low attack power and the opportunity to do so.
Wait, what? Did I restart the wrong... I restarted the wrong ones. Jesus. Oh boy. I just didn't realize that. When I reset the second time, I didn't go from the second save. That was just a waste of a walk. My B. Oh, we got away from two wolf encounters. That's kind of nice. Encounter 8. It's Plains Tiles. 1 in 24. Why am I getting an encounter on every step? One step away. Yeah, it you know what? It was a it's another one of those strats that I've been uh, working out. It's uh it wasn't a mistake, it was uh, further RNG manipulation is what it was. Clearly. It was just making the next walk even easier. Now we already have coordinates, because we checked those in Catlin before we reset, so we have that. They're far away, so kind of doesn't matter. At least not yet. Dragon scale for now. Maybe we'll grab one later if we find one in a chest. Ah, <sighs> now we can finally play the game. Yes, 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 14010. Old news. level. Still got him. No, oh, stop spell was not at level 4, but it was level 5. thing is we are damage breaking all these early game enemies so none of them should really be a threat unless they have abilities we have seen a couple of those strolls with dragon lord breath skeletons with hurt more Heal walking with the magic armor actually can play a role here. And what's kind of sad about it especially is that, based on the map as well, I'm pretty sure it funnels you directly into these towns. There was nowhere to go to the due east uh, area through the swamp. And north and east where we fought the golems, oh, fought the golems, ran into the golems and they pulverized us. It was also dead end to the east. Thank you. 
Nice crit. Gosh, I haven't seen Wayne's World in absolutely forever. I have to rewatch that at some point. necessary to keep the cash here. It's unlikely we're going to end up buying a flame sword, and other than keys and herbs, we're not going to really buy anything else the rest of the seed. But if this is faster than death warping and walking back from the swamp again, then this is what we should do. We could also take a look around and see if we find any slightly better enemies. Drakeys are not it. Yes, we have Magic Armor Silver Shield. And a Broadsword for a weapon. That, if we didn't have that, I probably wouldn't have reset. I would have suffered through it. Well, I'm glad I went to town and healed, because that really worked out for me. are another great enemy. 40 XP, defense broken, probably two to three shot them on average. Hey, new territory, level seven. Four, 14, three, four, and repel. Honestly? Not a great spell for us right now. We have too much defense. <laughs> if, uh, if we cast Repel, we're basically only going to be left with enemies that we can't fight. Agility doesn't let you dodge, but it does change the damage calculation. I guess technically it does let you dodge, per se, not in a... in the traditional sense, but agility plays into your defense points. So defensive power is basically your armor defense, plus your shield defense, plus, if you have the dragon scale equipped, plus half of your agility rounded down. So, for example, I think we have 35 agility. That would give us 17 defense. we can find in the nearby area. More swamp. Lovely. And the map continuing further to the west when I've already drawn my continent way over to the left side. Perfect. Armored Knight, even better! Basically, the reason why you can quote-unquote dodge sometimes when you have high agility, and really it's not high agility, it's high defense, 
is once the hero's defense power exceeds the enemy's attack power, they are quote-unquote defense broken. You'll probably notice enemies kind of go from hitting you for really a quantifiable amount to all of a sudden attacking you and hitting you for nothing. And that's because of the way the calculation is done. Basically, once you hit that point, it changes to a different damage formula. And that damage formula is much, much, much more in favor of the defensive side. The same mechanic is also uh, pulling you into whether or not you can repel enemies. If, you're, if they're quote-unquote damage broken, you're also repelling them. Yeah, the Ryan 8-bit guide is really good for all that stuff. 1175, no spell. Goes into all the formulas. Also shows a lot of the, uh, like the, like cross-link to the game data and the, where it is in the ROM that that information is located. So it's actually really helpful for somebody on the coding side of things, but for me, it's more just, oh, this means that the damage formula is this. Somehow the droll always gets the jump on me. I'm not sure how, but it seems to. Yeah, with our defense, we're probably repelling... Gosh, at least up through wyverns, if not probably through... A little bit higher than that at this point. Not Wraith Knights, though. Probably in the ballpark. Rip more. Kind of stinks. And heal. High maintenance enemy. If we cast stop spell first, it's not too bad, but I think this is the same zone with the uh, golem, so we're not gonna stay here. Plus, planes tiles. Low encounter rate. It does go further east. Kind of exploring a bit, dipping my toes in different areas, seeing what enemies are around. Nothing straight north of Breck that we can access. Drillord could be good though. I haven't seen one. This looks like it's the same. Maybe you just have to be a little bit further to the west. Ideally, we'd be in the desert tiles, but that's a different zone, apparently. That was slime. Oh. Doesn't seem like that's likely to be a good zone to grind in. RNG. Although, realistically, I mean, we're... We spotted the field 20 minutes. Even if anybody reset 5 or 10 minutes in, we're 
still a good 10 minutes behind just from that perspective. You'd have to play an absolutely lights out C to even have a remote chance. We'll do our best. If this zone were a little bit more consistent and if the drills didn't have Dragon Lord Breath, I would probably stick around here. I certainly still could. The Wolf Lords are worth it. <sighs> and the way for forward seems to be blocked by Armored Knights. So, Wolf Lords it is. Alternatively, you could just go over here to the east and fight the warlocks and skeletons and such. They're just worth a little bit less. Skeletons have the hurt more. But we can at least quickly pick up level 9, see if we get anything big. See if level 9's got something big. Our stats are pretty meager. Nothing outstanding. 11, 3, 8, 6. Meh. Outside doesn't really do anything for us. for us. Spectres aren't bad. But slimes not so much. Hedrovans would be a little strong for us. We shouldn't be defense breaking them yet. Definitely doable, though. The drills are so tempting, though, because we can one-shot them on average. But it's, it's when we don't that they're scary. This seems to be a bit better area. We've only seen the three enemies. Inspectors having fire breath isn't ideal. And if he could, you know, not dodge every time, that would be helpful too. Yeah, the eastern half of this desert seems to be pretty good. Oh no, exact lethal damage of one.
kind of saw that one coming. Playing the specters until uh, the spell wears off. Next encounter after this one will give level 10, unless it's a red slime. exact death. It's a little bit more frustrating than the anything that damages us will kill us roll, but happens. If only we had room a few minutes ago for a dragon scale in our inventory, that two defense could have made the difference. Depending on the numbers, it actually could have. Actually, looks like the range might be 11 to 22, so it wasn't an exact, but it was close. Alright, level 10. Two eight three zero eel. Doesn't really change much. Our survivability is still kind of meh. Don't have a lot of MP to cast heal more, as we've already seen armored knights down to the south, which is the only direction to go forward. Dude, this is a fantastic zone. This is actually probably the best enemy here. Thank you. 
The interesting thing about this too is that this is a little dead end here and the zone transitions just a few tiles to the south so if nobody else sees this zone here on this side, it's certainly possible that the other side is easily accessible shortly if we were to explore further, but this might be the superior grind option to what somebody else might be doing. 2 one 2 17. And hurt. Yeah, the MP is a... That's a difference maker for sure. I'd like a little bit more HP, but the MP is going to allow us to sit and grind for a lot longer. Drakey. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. He's got the face on him that you just know. He's got a little cackle going. Actually, another big benefit to us, and it definitely would be part of the post-game analysis, is that we didn't immediately learn Hurt more, like, right after if we hadn't reset. Because that would have been a game-changer for sure. It probably wouldn't have lost us a ton of time in the long run if we were to have learned it very quickly after resetting and, you know, let's say we learned it at level, whatever, 7, I think we reset at level 6. Like, it wouldn't have wasted a ton of time to do the reset and recoup that XP. But the fact that we haven't means that anybody who didn't do the opening grind, I think, has a huge disadvantage. Granted, everyone else may have and may have done it sooner than us. But at least we can hold on to hope for that to be the case. And again, maybe three or four tiles off screen down to the south past the Armored Knights is, you know, Freebie Cave with Erdrick Sword. So, who knows? Why we race the races? We just don't know. Quickly creeping up to 3,000 XP, which is what we need for level 12. Big thing we'd be looking for is the spell of Hurtmore. 
But again, any stats across the board are going to help us out. Erdmore probably would help us more than anything else because we've already seen Armored Knights and that's going to be our best option to survive battles with them. It's not going to be more HP and stuff to run. It's going to be a good offensive attacking spell. Thanks for the crit after I already attacked him three times. Four, two, sixteen, four, no spell. That's a that's a good bit of HP. Over eighty max. bit. We've got good defense with good defensive equipment. We've got enough attack power to fight most non charlock enemies. Enough MP to heal between fights. Four one two five for the next level, so it's gonna be a minute. heal after this battle. Oh, there's werewolves here? Gross. Also means we're not going to survive the walk through the swamp. Which, in fairness, is totally fine. I mean, I can use herbs if I want to, but death refill is probably almost exactly as fast. I 
I think they're in the zone that is just to the south. So again, it's hard to imagine zones without actually seeing zone boundaries visually. But if we think that, like, right here is probably the top of zone one, we're moving into the zone up here that had Drakeys and Druin Lords and such, and here, just to the east, I think, has the Armored Knight. So down in the southern part of this desert has the Armored Knight, the Werewolf. And the northern part of this desert is what has the enemies that we've been fighting. I think that's probably what it is. It's just a difference in the zones. But that's really important to recognize during a randomized race because that's, again, something I should have been paying attention to and really speaks to what we saw a bit earlier uh, with the golem just to the northeast of the castle. But if I had stayed further over to the west, even though there were plains tiles and unlikely to be an encounter, I might not have died and might have seen those towns a good 12 to 15 minutes sooner than I did. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Not sure why, but it does. Usually for me, it's when Windows wants to update or do something, or Windows Defender is deciding, you know, 1.30 in the afternoon on a Tuesday is a good time to do a full, you know, system scan. It's like, how about in the middle of the night? How about on a weekend evening when I'm not here? Like, an off time? Yes, not while I'm trying to finish and submit this time-sensitive, critical rush job that needs to be there five minutes ago. <laughs> Typical, right? Okay, level 13. 1, 4, 18, 2, no spell. The HP is starting to creep up over 100 now. Or exactly 100, rather. Uh, I don't think I have sleep. Sleep is okay, but realistically, the only thing I'd probably use sleep for is a stone man. I'm not going to really use it for anything else. Not at these stats, anyway. I mean, theoretically, if I had, like, 20 agility and I was trying to get away from a werewolf, it's better odds to cast sleep and get away than just hit run. But Herkmore is probably the only thing I'd be interested in. And again, I could probably very easily go out and explore right now. There's, like, my survivability has increased exponentially in the last couple levels. We've gotten, like, 35 more HP and, like, 25 more MP. We've got good attack power, as we've seen. Again, it's it's just kind of the balance of things is I, I have healing right here. I have a very good enemy set. The only thing that's going to make me accrue... XP faster, most likely, is going to be either Erdrick Sword or the Spell of Hurtmore. One I have to explore for, and I have no idea where it is. The other I can grind for, but I have no idea when Hurtmore is going to be learned. And if I go out and explore, I have no idea what I'm going to encounter either. So it's, it's not an easy decision. I don't think there's a clear-cut answer. I think a couple levels ago it was very easily defensible to say, you need to sit and grind. But now, with a lot more resources, the push to explore is probably much bigger. That's true, but, you know, level 16's 9750 XP, so we're, we haven't even gotten halfway there yet. If you think about it that way. We've had 13 chances to learn it. 
we haven't so far. And we need 5,000 more XP to guarantee it. <laughs> it just depends. I mean, the other thing, too, is we haven't really gained much strength over the last couple levels. So, Sharlock enemies are still not great for us to try to fight. They're going to be probably four, five, even six shot encounters if I choose to attack them. And none of them are defense broken, so they're going to be hitting me in the teens to twenties as well. And although I have more MP, it's still in the fifties. So at best, that's only seven heal more, so I might not get very far. super concerned that, oh, level 14 is going to be ghost stats level, like, my strength, agility, and MP are all in the 50s. If they were in the 70s or 80s, then I'd be like, I gotta hurry and find everything, because I'm gonna be ready to go here and have done none of my homework. Strength, 54 agility, 59 MP. Really, to even think about a Dragon Lord fight, we probably need a good 30 strength, 20 agility, 30 to 40 MP. This is just a zone of very fast, consistent XP. Red Slimes are the only bad enemy. All the others are all worth between whatever 40, whatever the Spectres are worth, 47, I think, and 83 for the Magiwyvern, so 60-ish on average. They're all defense broken except for the Magiwyvern. Spectres have the Fire Breath, but, you know, that's not all that concerning. I'm two-shotting everything except for the Magiwyvern's probably a three-shot on average. No scary abilities, no healing abilities, no sleep. I mean, it's, it's free XP. Doesn't mean it's the right answer, but it's an answer. Five, eight, one, fourteen, no spell again. Hmm. That's a couple extra heal mores, so that might be time to go for it and just see what's out there. I mean, the grind's not going anywhere. We'll burn the rest of our resources down and go. Yeah, 
One other spell that I would grind for if I didn't already have it would be Repel. Because that can very quickly become an issue. I did that in a tournament race, actually. Not too long ago. Basically, started the seed, grind up to like level 15 without doing anything. Had go stats, finally learned Repel, and then did everything in like 20 minutes. Exactly. No encounters, faster gathering, safer exploration. It's largely the reasoning as well that I've been really kind of reinforcing the importance of doing a gold grind for Silver Shield. Not so much in the exploration phase, but it does certainly play an impact, but especially in the Sherlock phase. If you're repelling, you know, four of the Sherlock enemies, because usually that's where your stats end up getting you. Somewhere in the you know, 80 to 90 defense range. Most commonly, at 80, you start repelling wizards, and once you get into the mid-80s, Star Wyverns, Green Dragons, and Werewolves. Like, if you can take out half of Sherlock encounters, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the actual enemy set, you know, that's a big time save, potentially. Plus, depending on what those encounters are and what those enemies have, you know, the potential for... You know, avoiding scary encounters. I mean, it only takes one failed run against a, you know, Star Wyvern with Sleep Dragon Lord Breath to ruin your day. Yeah, a lot of times it kind of equates that way. Just based on the numbers. If you're rocking, um, like, Dragon Scale plus Erdrick's Armor, plus Large Shield, that's 40 defense. So you'd have to have at least 80 agility to get up to 80 defense points just to be repelling the um, wizards. And you'd have to get up to, like, 92 agility to repel the rest, I think. The other three of those. And a lot of times we've just, with this new... Um, growth curve, we just haven't been seeing a lot of 90, 95, 100 plus agility seeds. It seems to stall out in the 70s and 80s. Silver Shield, that's an extra 10 defense on top. So I would start repelling wizards at 60 agility. And the rest, you know, by 72, which is much more in the average range. So we're lasting a lot longer here than I was kind of anticipating. I guess it shouldn't be a surprise, because the only thing that can really do damage to us is the Magic Wyvern. Nice crit. Gosh, anybody who's watching this or will watch this at some point in the, the VOD's future is going to be like, man, he talked about math for like an hour. This stream sucks. He walked back and forth across the same six tiles and talked about math for an hour. Why am I here? Why am I watching this? Why would anybody watch this? <laughs> and they would be correct. Why? Go do something with your life. Pretty much. Along with the vanilla speedrun, which basically does exactly what I'm doing for a good three and a half hours, four hours of it. Pretty much. Walking back and forth across desert tiles. Fighting 
three groups of enemies the entire game. groups of enemies, but still. Nice crit. X speed. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I've done enough of like vanilla speedrun attempts that it's not that bad. Like it can get boring, but I can also kind of hate to say it, but watch something else while I'm grinding, depending on the exact levels. Certainly some levels need to be a little bit more careful than others. Almost 15, 7,500, so just a fraction more than one Magic Wyvern after this. Technically, the Metal Slime plus a Magic Wyvern would do it, but at 25 HP, probably not going to be taking a Magic Wyvern. Just a hunch. Probably took just enough damage to not be able to get back to town. Which is funny. Level 15. 5, 7, 6, 2. No hurt more. that 5,000, or 4,000, rather. That's how long we were sitting there in that zone. We were able to basically grind up, naturally, 8,000 gold, and we took a death warp out of there at least once. So, yeah. We sat there for quite a while. But yeah, this area over here to the east dead ends out, so there's nothing there. The only way, literally, to go is east. Pretty sure. Technically, I guess I didn't actually see a complete tile when I... Of course, there's a town right here. It's from Mulder. They have keys here. My luck, it'll also have Erdrick's sword or something. It's a torch. I mean, the odds aren't good that it was, but it was possible. 
It would have been very funny. I would probably have almost expected somebody to have finished or something if it were. Fork in the road. We can go north. We can go east. Eastern edge of the map. Oh, exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like, if it were the sword, that would have probably- that would have been awful for us. I mean, it would be great, but terrible in our situation. With how we've approached the seed. The grave. I have to be a little bit careful with my key count. I think I have three left. Well, the armor wasn't far away. First belt number one. Again, our defense wasn't the problem, so Erdrick's armor really doesn't change much. It'll change as we are exploring now. But it would not have changed basically what we've done throughout the seed so far. We have no quest items. Two keys left. I'd like to find a key in a chest. To be honest, I should have probably purchased keys in Remolder while I was there, just topped off with the extra three. I'm thinking if I find Garenham, I'm obviously going to check it, as we find gold in chest four. And if we find the Swamp Cave, I'm definitely going to want to save the princess. We're probably going to save her anyway. It would make sense to just go ahead and save her. But that would burn our last key. Granted, Remolder's not too far from home. But still. That's something to keep in mind. The dragons with Hurt? Fighter's ring. Okay. Two attack power. Not nothing. Not worth diving the full grave over, but take it. The reason for the big grind was largely encounters like this. So red dragon. Hawksness, coal. Garenham. One key. There's the token, so that's quest item number one. Fairy flute. You can take it, I guess. And the Erdrick sword. That would have been nice to find earlier, especially after all that grinding. Okay, I guess. 
It's like I somehow knew that we were going to be in this position. Oh boy. Eirdric Sword and a Blue Dragon that knows Hurt. All of a sudden this becomes like way better grind than what we were doing for the last 25 minutes. the last key. What a stacked back of gear in Hamlet, though. Token, sword, flute. Cross some more stuff off the list here. Harp and Stone still out there, Death Necklace. We have Mountain Cave, Stone's Cave, and all three search tiles. Only one Cursed Belt so far, and we know that there are coordinates. They're not very countable, which is why we saved the Princess. Far western side of the map. further to the east. So it goes down to the southwest. This is more likely to be a dead end faster based on the map that we've seen so far. Of course it could be wrong. Is a dead end. A warrior on a quest for dragons. Very true. Another cave. Rainbow drop turn in. And it looks like that's it. Uh, we still have other places that we can go. Can't bail out yet. Nice crit. Ah, one shot. Very nice. I actually have return. It would be bad if I didn't. I would need to grind out level 16 before even taking the princess home because I dropped the wings that I had. Encounter rate, good lord.
That's three red dragons in four steps. But this is why we did all the grinding, right? We wanted to be ready for encounters like these. Of course, we go two steps further to the east and discover it's a dead end. And of course, it's very much looking like the coordinates will be up here in this area as well, since 86 north, 45 west is what we're looking for. It's probably going to be somewhere potentially even near the Swamp Cave. The exit on this continent. Wouldn't be surprised. Of course, Gwalen doesn't love us enough to tell us if we're there now. We have to fully rescue her before she loves us. Another cave. Nah. Staff turn in. We do not have the harp. Uh, I think this has to be the mountain cave. Sherlock. We hadn't found that yet. Gotta be careful with the MP. 14 needed for outside plus return. the stones. Outside chance, if we find the harp here, we could do our turn-ins. And that would mean that the death necklace is on the map. actually going to take these just for MP purposes, just in case. Dragon scale, we actually don't have one. Let's take that too. Empty. One more chance for something. The other thing is, if this is the death necklace, then we know that the harp is on the map. It's not ideal for our current routing, but at least we would know that we can skip looking for the remaining things, and we can't because it's gold. Oh. One's Hawksness, one's Coal. It's actually kind of good luck for us. Silver Harp, that means... Death Necklace is on the coordinates. Oxness has nothing. Uh, we're gonna check it, though. Just for grind purposes, I guess. Stone Man. So close to 16, and we now have it. 2, 4, 17, 9, just confirming.
We still need stats, so grinding is still part of what we need to do. God, we are also pretty close to Death Necklace HP. So is taking the princess back and walking all the way back and forth worth it? That's a tough sell. Staff cave up here? I mean, I know it is, but... Uh-oh. Or is that the staff cave that I just walked past? Okay, this is actually the staff cave. For some reason, I had written down that this is like Mountain Cave. I think I just, uh, mixed them up. Let's do it, actually. The drop cave is closer to the other end of Swamp. And instead of backtracking all the way, we can just make it a all-forward walk, and we can also pick up the Death Necklace on the overworld. Should be somewhere along the walk on the way back. definitely don't have enough strength and also definitely do not have enough MP. That's the grave. Keys, 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 keys. Remolder. Should have stopped at Remolder. At least I remembered now. I mean, I would realize it as soon as I got into Garenham and couldn't get to the door. We didn't find any keys in chess. It's a bit unlucky. Thank you. 
Oh, did I hit... I hit right. My bad. Now still going, thanks for hanging out. You saw pretty much the strategy of the seed, just not the best execution we did. Everything we could, it just turned out that uh, the order of things didn't work out really well for us. But have a good rest of your evening, enjoy the week ahead. how free this grind would have been had we explored just a little bit earlier. But I mean, realistically, at like level 9, this grind looks like it would have been doable. But you just never know. Certainly seen plenty of red dragons on the overworld. They could have been problematic. We saw an armored knight blocking our way between Cantlin and Bermulder, plus werewolves as well. Just depends on stats whether or not 17 will be enough. Need a bit of strength to be sure, even with the death necklace. Some MP would be nice as well, we only have 10 heal mores. for level 17. Don't miss menu. Hey, level 17, have you got some big numbers for me? Seven's not bad, six not bad, eleven, nine. Ah, it's close, but I don't think it's quite enough. With fairy water, it's kind of the same situation. Just not quite enough. And this is such a fast, easy grind here. best OAG if only crits were determined that way and it's not just RNG. Yeah, this is a bit of a rough one. We had some bad luck early on and 
I think, again, really good strategy in the mid-game, but it just turned out to not be the right, uh, well, likely to be the right, uh, thing to do. We'll talk about it in the post-game. Nice crit. Yeah, when you crit, it's a lot easier. You are correct. Should have been the strat I was using all along. What was I thinking? Fourteen thousand two fifty for the level, so we're quickly headed in that direction. Hopefully, depending on Blue Dragon's attacks, we should be able to get it before leaving. Take whatever fights along the way. 37 HP is getting a little scary. I mean, defense breaking the bottom half of Charlotte, we theoretically could have even dove and grind. Ground up uh, level 18. Of course, if it's mostly MP, then. We would be SOL three one one five. Gosh, that really doesn't change much now, does it? It's an extra heal more.
Alright, there's our rainbow drop. actually right exactly where I thought by the swamp cave. I just forgot to do it before I walked away. Fine. No, it's actually on the other side of these mountains. That was the staff cave that we just passed. This is the mountain cave, back of Sherlock's right here. Stop and coal, top off our resources. Again, numbers are a little borderline, but we haven't seen anything overly scary as yet. We have 80 agility, so hopefully we'll be able to run from everything. One fairy water for repel purposes. Which we are going to stay at the inn again just to save the two MP for repel. Sherlock dive with Erdrick's armor already equipped. Amazing. Fortunately, I don't have a torch. I'd like to keep the two MP for repel or sleep. We'll be just bonking around here in the bottom of Sherlock. This is the top C-shaped floor, just going around the perimeter. Alright, zone two, and now the diamond-shaped floor. Dragons, not ideal. Switch back floor. Mm -hmm. 
Fork in the road. Oh, so many red dragon encounters. Step Golem. Kind of have to hope that there aren't any reds here in the bottom zone. Sherlock. Looks like saving the two MP generally hasn't done much. Only run into, I think, two encounters the entirety of Sherlock, two Star Wyverns that would have been repelling. So if this is a Stone Man, it was a good play. If not, it really matter. In Axe Knight, they have Stop Spell. can for the actual Dragonlord fight, so we'll do the little bit of heal walking. Thou art a fool! Pack attacked. At least it was a stop spell. DL1 have been awful. Physical attack is good. Kill him here? Nope. Another physical is good, though. We go in at 78. Fingers crossed we open with a double. If not, hopefully at least a single. Roll's not doing us any favors. Several below average, couple min rolls. 
105. Really need to roll at or above average the rest of the way. That's below average, 117. Also below average, 128. Need monster rolls. One forty two. One fifty three. Thou hast failed, and thou art cursed. Yeah, the one heal more that we had to burn on the way down definitely cost us, unfortunately. Not much you can do about it. It was the right thing to do. I had 9 HP left. If I die, then I have to make this entire walk again. seed where we played well and the game just didn't really want us to succeed. Yeah, if we had died against that red dragon, this is half of the walk, so... It would have been like a four or five minute time loss just to try again. And we certainly still could have won at the last last battle. If a number of things could have happened, we could have rolled at least a, at or above average, we would have been okay. I think we rolled slightly below average. If we had gotten a double attack to start, which we didn't, we only got a single. And, I mean, you really can't, you know, count on getting a double attack mid-fight on 102 HP or whatever it was that I had, so... Not gonna complain about that. But definitely those other things. Dive this time is now a little bit more dangerous, only 102 max HP, not whatever we had before, 136. So any red dragon encounters that uh, force us to, you know, potentially heal or fail to run a couple of times, 
Now, we, we can't withstand three attacks. Now it's likely only two. Same situation as before. And, I mean, there's not much you can do. There's just not much you can do. Not return. Repel. I was just saving that one step. It's definitely going to make a difference. Give it one more go. If it doesn't work, we will probably call it quits. So that's good, at least. We did use our torch, though, so we'll have to do dark navigation again. I was gonna say, that last dive was such a stark difference compared to the first dive where we had like 9 or 10 red dragon encounters in the top two zones. That one only had two, and it took us through almost the entirety of the middle zone. 
And we got an encounter on stairs, no less, where the encounter rate is cut in half. Naturally. What, four failed runs ended our dive? Also, losing an herb to a stone man right in front of the Dragon Lord didn't feel good either. Not likely to make a difference, but you never know. Might have led to an opening double instead of an opening single. All we needed was one more swing. Alright, so we've completed our C on the first floor. Now we're on the diamond floor. Again, this dive. We could have finished 12 minutes ago. Instead, we have 10 red dragon encounters, and this time we have one. Also, we know we can use repel. Let's go ahead and use it. Take three. Hopefully, DL2 fight. Take two. steps away. Again, Stone Man? Really? Really? Oh, we're in better shape for sure. Let's see how it goes. shot? Free shot. And we get first strike. 16. <sighs> I really can't attack on 46 to start. Forty seven numbers are awful. Fifty five. Sixty-three. Seventy-four. 
87. One oh seven, one seventeen. One twenty-six. We we're actually going to do worse in this fight than the last one. One forty-eight. We max rolled our first attack, and we never rolled average or higher the rest of the fight. Our range was 8 to 16, we rolled 16, and every roll for the rest of the fight was 11 or lower. We had more attacks and did less damage than our last fight. Apparently, I should have attacked at 46 to start. That's another thing about the start of that fight. I had 94 HP. I'm safe as long as he doesn't do at least 46 damage. Which he has about a, oh, I don't know, 10% chance to do. What did he do? Max roll Dragonlord Breath. Probably still should have swung for safety at 46. Not for safety, but in terms of doing enough damage, but, I mean, considering we only did 148 damage, no guarantees we would have uh, an additional swing anyway. Even a max roll doesn't clear the range from 148. Lots of sub-10s indeed. 8s, 9s, 10s, 11s. say, if I'm out of keys, I'm just quitting. <laughs> one key left means one try left.
This time it didn't take us too long to get a red dragon encounter. Indeed. I managed to cruise through the rest of Zone 1 without seeing any more. Now to the diamond floor again. Bottom floor again, or not bottom floor, bottom zone, U-shaped floor. Hold right. Another stairs encounter. Spike tile again. Let's see if this time we can manage to walk the 10 steps to DL2 or uh, Dragon Lord without uh, a stone man run blocking us multiple times. That'd be nice. Stop spells good. Spells good, okay. We're going to get 102 this time. Of course, if we don't get first strike, then we're in the same position we were in the last fight. We don't get first strike. Opening with 10. Eighty-six. 
94. One oh three numbers are hilarious. One fifteen. One twenty five. One thirty nine and one fifty three. I think that's enough. Us two were decent swings. At least they were at or slightly above average. There's there's that at least. Do too much against that kind of energy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in fairness, I mean, if you look at the numbers and you you really kind of hammer down at it, throw on some background stuff here. Oops. Nice track name. Thanks, guys. I mean, if you really look at the numbers, uh, we're sitting at 132 attack power here. And at 132 attack power, your attack range is from 8 to 16, to 12 on average. Um, DL2 has between 150 and 165 max HP. And with 12 heal mars, assuming you get into the fight full, and you start the fight with at least an attack, and you finish, you know, you're going to attack once after your last deal more, and then again, even though you're not safe to do so anymore based on your HP, so you're going to get two more swings than you are heal mores. So that's 14 attacks. With 12 as an average, on average, you should do 168 damage. Now the first time, we were down a heal more, so we got one less swing. So we only had... 13 swings, so on average you'll do 156 damage. We did 152. So our numbers were, you know, we were slightly below average, but I mean certainly very close and tight in there in, in the in the average range. The second fight, with 14 attacks, we managed to only do 148 damage, which is 20 below average. And on the third fight, also with 14 attacks, we did 153. So, and again, there's no guarantee that even with a max roll, um, if we were to have tried an additional attack at 46 damage, or 46 HP in the second fight, no guarantee, even if we survive that, that we win the fight. I have no idea what DL2's uh, HP was, um, but I mean, at minimum, we would have gotten to 156, but even if we had max rolled a 16, we would have only gotten to 164, and he could have 165. So... Still no guarantee we were going to win that, even if we had taken that risky swing. And again, the reason I didn't is because I started with a 16 in that fight. If I had rolled an 8, I'd probably go ahead and, and take the swing, knowing that I'm already behind even after one attack. But we didn't, and we know how that fight went. It happens. Take a minute here to get the map up. Hmm. 
least me doing this portion has generally gotten a little bit faster. This will take some minute because I have to re-add and then reactivate the camera. as well. Okay, there we go. There's our map for the seed. We can see a nice, good Thou Art Dead, which is about perfect. Hey, Nim, welcome in. Let's just say our co-op seed went better than this one did. <laughs> took, took the FF in this one. Very appropriate. So started off down here at the bottom of the map. Uh, yes, I did, Nim. I think uh, I think uh, four Sherlock dives and three Dragon Lord fights was enough for me. Start off Tanthagil down here. Not the best starting stats. Six, twelve, twenty-three, eight, and the spell of Radiant. But we were able to start off with keys. There was a gold grind available in the castle. Both nice. The unfortunate portion was the fact that we were swamp locked, not swamp locked, but we were in the swamp at the start. We got out with like 9 HP, and I explored to the east and far enough to the north to not see Catlin and Breck right next to each other for 20 minutes. Catlin had magic armor, silver shield, Breckinary had broadsword, and we didn't know about it until about 20 minutes in when I reset. So I started over 20 minutes into the seed, so we spotted the field a solid 20 minute head start. We did an opening grind for those things, and then we got to work. And really, we pretty much did a little bit of exploration here to the west, and then we sat in a zone right here just to the northeast of Catlin until we gained level 15. So we ground up there for quite a long time, which at the time was perfect. Everything about it was awesome. We had decent attack power with the broadsword. We didn't have hurt more, and we didn't even have hurt more at level 15. Hurt more was a level 16 game, so grinding was definitely the way to go. For the early portion of it, we had relatively low HP and not much MP. So even though we had heal and heal more, we wouldn't have been able to sustain ourselves too far in the world. And we had already seen just to the south in here armored knights, so we knew that they were going to be a force to be reckoned with, among other things that we would likely face along the way. So this zone right here, Magiwyvern, which were not defense, defense broken at any point during our grind, but we were on average four-shotting them at the beginning and then three-shotting them later on. Wyverns, which were defense broken and being two-shot, three-shot at the beginning, then two-shot later on. Wolflords, defense broken and two-shot. Spectres, defense broken and two-shot. And the Red Slimes, which we ran from, so no problem. So really, that was a super good zone. Um, and desert tiles and everything. So we sat there literally to level 15 before we moved out. Uh, and I think we probably caught up a lot of time with one big exception. So we already had keys when we explored east next. We found Remolder. Nothing remarkable about that. We went up north to the grave, and that's where we got our first set of bad news. Erdrick's armor was in one of the top chests in the grave. But realistically, we weren't fighting against things that had breath attacks or 
you know, sleep and hurt more or stop spell that was causing problems. So that wasn't that bad. We already had silver shield and magic armor. No big deal. The problem was that we walked just up to the north and Garenham had Erdrick Sword. So we were giving up 20 attack power the entire time we were sitting here. And it was, I mean, it's far away on the map, but realistically it was turned out to be not that bad of a walk, at least level 15. And Swamp Cave had a blue dragon that knew Hurt. So that was also a free grind probably from level 9 on. And we were already level 15, so we had an inferior grind at least for maybe half the time we were grinding. Maybe slightly less than half. Probably from about level 11 or 12 it was a, the clear advantage would go to that zone, or to that uh, grind tile. And the fact that we were giving up the 20 attack power. Regardless, we soldiered on, went across, we did save the princess, and went across the swamp cave and just carried her around and explored. At this point, we had the armor and the sword. I believe at that point we also found the fighter's ring in the bottom of the grave. And we also found the token, as well as the fairy flute in the back of Garenham. But still, just the one quest item. A couple still to find. We went south first from Swamp Cave, found a lot of nothing except for the Rainbow Drop turn-in, east in a couple of dead ends, but we did find the Staff turn-in, yet no harp yet, Mountain Cave, which we full cleared and did find the stones, and then on the other side of Sherlock we found Cole, which had the harp. So all of a sudden we're grind and go mode. Stats weren't great there around level 16, uh, so we did backtrack a bit and kind of uh, went and did our turn-in. We picked up the Staff Cave. Because we already had 120 plus HP, we decided to return the princess, and even though we knew the coordinates, 86 north, 45 west, were going to be somewhere up here, and it was going to require doing a lot of backtrack walking to do it, I think it was worth it because we still needed to grind anyway, and the death necklace was likely going to be helpful. So we did do it. Search tile was somewhere right around here, and it was indeed the death necklace. Hawksness had a stone man, which was not a great grind, so we went back into the swamp cave. And that's where we did our grind up to level 18. And level 18, realistically, again, we probably could have gone to level 19 and certainly made things easier, but 18 should have been more than enough. 132 attack power with the death necklace, 102 HP, so really not much in the way of doubles ever going to happen. 12 heal mores, 80 agility, and 90 defense. So defense breaking half of Sherlock, likely to get there as long as you don't get destroyed by... Sorry, one second. Sorry about that. I heard something in the other room. I think it was probably my upstairs neighbor dropped something and it kind of hit the floor hard. I thought it was like a crashing sound from my other dining room or something, but it was not. In any case, level 18. So with all that, we talked about it pretty extensively. 8 to 16 damage, 12 on average, 13 to 14 attacks to win with 12 heal mores. The numbers look good. Uh, unfortunately, we just got garbage rolls pretty much all three times. We were down to heal more the first time, did 153. Second time, we went in full and at 94 HP. And of course, we got first swing, but DL2 decided to max breathe for 48. We decided not to swing on 46, and then we rolled below average the next 13 swings. So we only did 148. We did less damage with more swings. And then the third time through, we did 153. So we did one more damage than we did the first time on that one extra swing. Again, mostly below average and died again. There's also a red dragon death on a dive mixed in there. So really, it comes down to two things. One, the end game, of course, obviously. All three things then. Two, the 20 minutes that it took me to find Cantlin here. I mean, again, this was not that far of a walk. 
and in this area past the um, the swamp that was around the castle. This is lots of plains tiles, and I think I made the mistake. I was one or two tiles too far to the east and ran into golems here and didn't go back for a while. I think I'd already gotten up to level six before eventually exploring back up there and finding the towns. So that's 20 minutes and could have been as little as like three or four minutes. Let's say on average it's seven or eight minutes before you get up there and see. But even that's pretty generous. We very easily could cut, you know, 13, 14 minutes off our time. And we were in the DL2 fight at two hours. So we could have been done in 140s and, you know, the winner of this race was at 140 flat. So likely got and saw the towns very, very early. And the other factor is we did a lot of grinding here and didn't see that, you know, the superior grind was going to be right next to Erdrick's armor, Erdrick's sword, and a spike tile enemy that was a complete pushover. So that combination definitely put us back. And even with those two huge problems, we still had a chance basically to finish second, which is kind of astonishing. Uh, the second finisher didn't finish until 1.58, and everybody else was over two hours, so we very easily could have finished second or third in this race of uh, eight people. But unfortunately, the RNG just said no dice. It happens. Can't get them all. We've had some bad luck lately. Bad Sherlock dives, bad RNG on rolls on the Dragon Lord, bad exploration luck. Anyway, is what it is. We'll get them next time. At least that's why I keep telling myself. Hopefully it was a decent enough watch, even though we mostly just walked around in the desert for a good portion of time and <laughs> died to the Dragon Lord a lot. <laughs>